This is that rue bread recipe that everybody's been asking for. Um, it's from the Taste of Home website, so it's a uh, copyright recipe. So I'll put a link to the recipe. I can't actually list the recipe on here, but uh, I'll put a link where you can go find it. And it starts out with some fresh picked rhubarb. And what you have to do is just kind of clean it up. And every once in a while you get some little stringy things you have to peel off and then coarsely chop it up and my wife getting it ready and um, I've asked her to uh, get a bigger knife and put three or four pieces side by side and I'll never ask that again so that's the way she chops it and then you light up the oven at 350 and get that warming up and she's got a little four small loaf pan that she's using for this we like these little ones uh, you can do two large loaves if you want with this recipe but we prefer the smaller ones they're good for gifts or they're you know good to grab for have with coffee or something like that so here it is getting ready to make it you take and you start out by uh, putting some of the sugar on the rhubarb and you know rhubarb definitely needs sugar added to it at least the rhubarb that we grow it's a um it's supposed to be like a strawberry rhubarb they called it or something like that but it still uh does require quite a bit of sugar to enjoy it so she just mixes that up a little bit and gets everything else out there's some sea salt some vanilla extract and cinnamon and canola oil and baking powder baking soda eggs flour and sugar and we like to use walnuts they actually call for pecans in it i think but uh we we prefer the walnuts so you start out with the uh putting the canola oil it takes two bowls to start out with one for the wet and one for the dry and yes it does call for canola oil um i know many people say you shouldn't use it but we use probably 15 gallons of it a year and it hasn't killed us yet but you can use i guess you can use whatever you want but you know canola oil works for us then there's two eggs go in there and just crack them open and and it doesn't say what type of eggs but we always use chicken eggs so then you have to put in a um a little bit of vanilla extract we don't have the real stuff we just get the uh the extract stuff here the imitation vanilla but it works good too for recipes like this it, it does add a good flavor then there's a uh, little bit more sugar. So if you cannot, you know, tolerate sugar, um, you really may not want to make this recipe because it really wouldn't be good without the sugar. Um, I'm not sure if artificial sweetener would work in it or not, but uh, for the rhubarb and that tartness of it, you really do need, you know, the sugar to offset that. So then you just have to mix that all up in the, the one bowl. Make sure everything's really blended together good and um, eggs are all you know mixed in with everything and the sugar's all broken up and mixed in. Now my wife told me I could make the video if I didn't get in her way so I'm just kind of sitting back out of the way and trying to get what I can. And then there's a, uh, a dry bowl that you mix up. And that just uses a plain all-purpose flour. That's what we use at least. Um, that's what it calls for. And I guess you could substitute some other flours for it if you wanted to. But we kind of stick with the recipe because we enjoy the flavor of it. That's it for the flour and then you put in a uh, little bit of salt and we like to use a uh, sea salt and I'm not really sure what difference it makes. And then there's some uh, baking soda and baking powder that also get added <laughs> it 
Yeah, you can see we keep all our, you know, like the baking soda and powder in these ball jars. And actually, I'll go back and vacuum seal them every once in a while just to keep moisture and stuff out and keep it fresh. That little, those little, one of the little sliding spoons that's adjustable on the fly is really good for baking things like this if you don't have one. And then this also has a little bit of cinnamon that really does give it a nice flavor. It goes really good with the rhubarb. And it's time to, to stir up that dry bowl now. Get everything mixed up good. You really need it, you know, blended nice and good here before you start mixing it together. So now she's just going to start by adding about half of that to the wet bowl and just start uh, stirring that around with a spatula trying to get that all mixed up. Trying to beat it all together there. And it does it does start out in the beginning uh, pretty easy to, to stir up like that. But as you add that dry mixture to it, it gets to become a uh, extremely dry flour or dry d dough that uh, stiffens up real quick and gets to be tough to get mixed up good. Now with all the dry weather that we've had lately, our rhubarb is really just about to the end of its life cycle this year. Just keep praying for rain. We, uh, like yesterday, a couple miles away from us, they got two inches and we got uh, not even a sixteenth of an inch, just a couple of drops. But, you know, here she is getting it mixed up. You can see it does get to, you know, be a pretty stiff mixture there when you get near the end. And then it's time to go back and add in that rhubarb that uh, had been coated with the sugar there. And then she's going to add some walnuts. Um, they call for pecans, but we found that we like the flavor of it with uh, chopped walnuts better. So, you know, you can add whatever you want. And they're really all optional too, but we pr we really enjoy the walnuts, so... And then it's time to just work on that and uh, try to get that all mixed evenly, which is uh, you know, the toughest part right now because you can see it's, it's a really uh, stiff consistency there. So she'll mix it up like that for a couple minutes here, trying to get it all, you know, all stirred together. And then uh, this pan here has been all buttered and uh, greased actually and uh, has some flour in it so hopefully they don't stick and she's gonna just divide that batter between the four things there and like I said before you can make two larger loaves if you want to but we kind of prefer these smaller loaves um, and they do freeze well and they do defrost fairly quickly too so and this does freeze excellent. It uh, comes out just like you baked it. So it's not something you have to worry about, you know, making a batch now and enjoying them all winter. And she, this is probably about the fourth or fifth batch she's uh, made this year so far. So there they are. Everything's uh, in the pan now. And it's time to put it in the oven. Um... And I think that was 350, and they say 50 to 60 minutes. Set timer for 50. So she'll minutes. fight with that uh, Echo, the Amazon Echo thing there, to get the timer going for a while. Echo, stop. Echo, stop. Timer. Every once in a while, it has a <laughs> tough time understanding Echo. you, it seems like. Yeah, it can get real aggravated, but normally it really minutes. works perfect. You can get like 20 timers going minutes. on that thing at a time, yeah. and they all work perfect. So she got it set for 50 minutes here. And in the last 10 seconds, it counts down like this and, you know, lets you know the time's almost up. 
And at that point in time, she starts with 50 minutes, like they say, and she's going to just look at them in the oven now. And she, uh, again, she uses that magic finger to tell if they're done. Most people use a toothpick and they stick it in and pull it out. But uh, she uses the magic finger and said, nope, need six more minutes. So that's what she did. Six more minutes and, you know, then here they are. They're all done and ready to cool. So you can see it's really a fairly uh, quick and easy recipe to make. And uh, it does come out really tasty if you do have some rhubarb. And if you like the flavor of rhubarb. So after letting them cool for you know at least minimum of 10 minutes a little bit longer usually uh, she likes to just run a knife around the edge so that they don't come out broken that usually helps sometimes you know with the rhubarb and the sugar you'll get some little bit of sticking but find out that a, a knife really does help a little bit and then you start out there with uh Rue bread upside down bread there to start out with and then you can just make it right side up bread by flipping them so there they are all done uh, ready to, to let them cool and pack them up and put them in the freezer but somehow one of them just uh, is going to be eaten now and uh, so I just grabbed it started eating it and these are a couple little mermaids that my wife just finished up crocheting and knitting and I thought they were so cool so uh, they're little gifts that she's going to be giving away so if you got some of this rhubarb grown in your backyard and you enjoy it um, I really recommend that you give this a try and I will put a link to the recipe down in the description thanks for watching please subscribe